Hi all. I don't think we've done enough justice to Bolzlavsky, Isaac Bolzlavsky in the Evolution of Chess Style series. Not yet. So we know he played Bronstein uh, to play off to the winner of, of which would meet Mikhail Botvinnik. But let's rewind just for a few moments to some instructive games of Bolzlavsky. In the 1950 World Candidates Tournament, he played Smyslov. So who was going to be, of course, a future world chess champion. Let's see what happened in this game. Bozgavsky playing white, played d4. Smyslov played d5. We have c4. c6, the Slav defense, very solid. Knight c3. Knight f6. Knight f3, not minding the pawn being taken here, but making provisions to try and stop black grabbing onto that, holding onto that with this move a4. So making it difficult for black to hold onto that pawn. Black takes the opportunity to strike at the center now with c5. We have e4, c takes d. And now queen takes d4, not frightened of a queen exchange. There's still pressure on the black position here. Black did take, knight takes d4. And possibly one of black's better moves, it seems, is e5 theoretically. But in this game, uh, we see Smyslov playing e6. Now, if we just look at this position for a moment, there's actually two principal threats. Knight db5 and also e5. Uh, so, for example, just to show you, like here, e5 is dangerous because then we can still come into that c7 square with knight d5. So that would be a dangerous continuation. So both e6 and e5 make some provision against e5, but maybe e5 is just a more aggressive uh, thing to do here than e6. But e6 was played in this game. So why isn't this so good? <clears throat> Perhaps, well, knight db5 was played. So black is on the defensive here already. Knight a6, it looks awkward to defend c7 like that. Now white restores material equality. We have bishop c5. Now bishop f4 pointing at black's weak d6 square. Already it seems in this position, white is doing very well out of the opening. He wouldn't be displeased by this opening position. But you might argue, well, surely isn't black solid enough? Cannot black just defend that square d6? Well, he does so with his king, white castles. But this is still awkward. This e5 is still imminent. That's why e5 from black earlier might have been better because e5 threatens to dislodge this knight and give white some extra squares. And it's difficult to do something about it. Black plays bishop d7, just allowing e5 here. And this is not very pleasant. If the knight goes back, then this didn't happen. But maybe bishop g5 check. This is just not very nice for white, uh, for black rather to have this sort of position. It seems black's pieces are just huddled mostly on the first rank here. So the knight decides to go here instead. Instead that looks awkward as well. So we have two knights on the rim here in this position. Is it justified? Bishop, there's a very strong move here. What does the bishop want to do here? What would you do here with white? Uh, positional decision here if you have to assess the swings and roundabouts of this the trade-offs what would you play in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video starting from now white play okay now you might find this surprising but the bishop actually went here, not minding the double pawns. Another move, um, <clears throat> I mean, other moves might not be so great if the bishop uh, moves here. Okay, white would be threatening uh, g4, but maybe some provision can be made for the knight uh, at some point, like g6 at some point. Uh, but yeah, this move, bishop e3, what it does is try and undermine black's control of the dark squares and Spinsdorf doesn't take this bishop immediately it's a very difficult position if he takes it also of course this f file and you can see that f7 is going to be subject to scrutiny after knight d6 
So for the moment, Smyslov plays rook hc8. So potentially threatening to win this bishop. That's addressed, hitting the knight, taking the bishop out of danger there and just hitting this displaced knight. So we have both these knights still displaced on the rim, g6. We have knight e4 now, which seems to be an open invitation potentially for a rook to land on the 7th rank here. But uh, if black doesn't take here, then the knight, a knight's going to land on d6. Or even worse, just check first. If the bishop retreated, check first, then a knight d6 still looks extremely unpleasant. So we have bishop takes e3. And this f takes e3, of course, the pawns look wretched. But look at the knights. Look at f7. A knight d6 is happening soon. And in fact, after rook c2, this attack on the bishop, guess what? What does white play in this position to respond to this apparent attack on the bishop? If I give you five seconds here. Yep, knight just comes into d6. It doesn't matter about rook takes e2 here. Look at white's knights compared to Smyslov's knights. Has ever Smyslov's knights been so disastrously placed compared to his opponents? Look at white's beautifully centralized and entrenched knights on the weakened dark squares. A small price to pay perhaps for these doubled pawns, apparently wretched, but controlling all the key dark squares in this position. Black dare not take this uh, bishop. If he did, rook takes f7. King moves. Rook f8 check. The knight's controlling e8. We're going to be winning, winning that rook on a8. So instead, black played rook f8. But now this bishop snaps off the knight on a6, believe it or not, taking away a key defender of c7. White's domination is increasing on the dark squares, potentially. He wants to get a piece to c7 now, so after takes, first he drives the knight back to a terrible spot on g7 where it's locked out of the game. And now knight f6 threatens actually immediately knight takes h7. If the rook moves then rook takes f7. Black now is in a desperate state. Smyslov plays bishop c6 trying for apparently dangerous rook g2. But white's position is so strong here that even it, it seems technically possible to even play this knight takes h7 it doesn't need to but it's such a strong position for example just to show you why it's so strong e4 here could still be good for white but no there's no need to indulge this check at all white plays a really super elegant move which finishes the game can you see what white does if i give you five seconds starting from now Okay, rook fc1, yeah, giving the king f1, making this check even more harmless. And black just resigned here. If he takes and the bishop goes back, this is just heading for a zugzwang position for black. This kind of position, what is black doing here? The knight's totally out of the game. Knight can never play knight e8, we just take it and then take on d7. Black's heading for a zugzwang. Has ever Smyslov been crushed so quickly? 22 moves. Now I have to say, Bolzlavsky is someone that really impressed me. Game three of a book called Most Instructive Games of Chess Ever Played by Chernev, which you can see on Amazon Preview for free. I'll give you the link in this video. But it's also video annotated on this channel. If you search for amazing chess game knight outpost d5 or just basically king's crusher bolzlevsky should find it the knight outpost on d5 i recommend you check out it seems bolzlevsky has a very good knowledge intimate knowledge of how pawn structure can help the pieces a very 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 strong player between 1945 and 1950 and you know obviously a world championship candidate and if we think about it, in the 1950 candidates tournament, he was leading a full point ahead of David Bronstein and had two quick draws, letting Bronstein catch up. And they were great friends. And in fact, Bolzowski's daughter married Bronstein <laughs> later. Um, I think they were, they were very, very good friends. 
and Bolzlewski perhaps just didn't want the pressure. Um, Jessica Fisher Queen has opinionated on a recent video that perhaps you know he really simply didn't want to become world champion because there's a certain amount of stress and pressure back in those times it wouldn't have been um in the us site wouldn't uh, have been as prestigious as you might think uh it's a great responsibility and maybe he just didn't want it but but this this player is a great player he has very beautiful strategically instructive games this is one of them but i would recommend you check out uh, the night outpost on d5 which i think should be part of you know the recommended video reading vid video viewing for this evolution of style series so bolzlevsky i'd like to touch on with a few other game examples before we move on to look at bronstein against botvinik so this is obviously an impressively short concise game and i hope you got something from this particular game comments or questions on youtube thanks very much